First up, sorry for losing my voice at the Steelers game, but Forza Horizon 4 finally released on the PC and it's actually running pretty well. In today's video, we're gonna be benchmarking the game with eight budget graphics cards and with a system that you would actually pair with these budget graphics cards and not something completely insane. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're gonna to be benchmarking Forza Horizon 4 with eight budget graphics cards. And if you're new here and you wanna see more benchmarking or PC building videos like that super budget $100 build I just did last week, then hit the subscribe button down below and also that notification bell. That way you never miss an episode. But yeah, let's start benchmarking. For today's video, we're gonna be benchmarking eight budget graphics cards, which are all being widely used here in late 2018. These cards are the GT 1030, GTX 660 Ti, GTX 750 Ti, GTX 960, GTX 1050 Ti, GTX 1060, the R7 360, and finally the RX 460. For our testing platform today, I'm gonna to use this Dell Optiplex that you guys have seen in a ton of other builds guide videos. It's rocking an i5-3470 clocked at 3.2 gigahertz, has 8 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, and I have Forza Horizon 4 installed on a Kingston 120 gigabyte SSD. Like I explained in the intro, this Dell Optiplex is a perfect testing platform for our GPUs today because this is a realistic option if you were building a budget used gaming PC. To kick off these benchmarks, here is a chart showing every card with the exact same settings, 1080p and the low preset. I'll show the individual benchmarks with specific settings for each card in just a second. As you can see, though all of these cards other than the GT 1030 can actually handle this game in 1080p low which isn't something that we usually see in these budget benchmarking videos. For the upcoming benchmarks with each specific graphics card I'm going to show you what settings you would need if you have to game at that 50 to 60 FPS mark which as you guys know is what I always personally go for. And finally before showing the benchmarks for each card I just want to mention that for today's testing I'm actually using the in-game benchmarking tool and not the real-time test. Benchmarking games on the Windows Store platform is an absolute nightmare because you can't get overlay software to work like MSI Afterburner, plus the benchmarking tool is actually pretty similar to what you would get when you're actually playing the game. The first card up was our super budget GT 1030 that I know a lot of you are still rocking, and for this one in order to hit that 50 to 60 FPS target like I just said, I had to crank the settings down to 720p and very low. Keep in mind that if you're okay with 30ish FPS, you can definitely jump into 1080p very low, just depends on what you personally prefer. The second card in our list was the GTX 660 Ti, make sure you check out my dedicated video that I just made on this one. It's actually pretty impressive still here in 2018. And in 720p in low settings, I got an average FPS of 57. Once again, 1080p in low settings were definitely playable, but we had to drop it down to 720p to get that 50 to 60 FPS mark. Next up was the super popular GTX 750 Ti, and here I had to stay in 720p in low settings, and I got just under what we got with the 660 Ti with an average FPS of 50. Moving on to our 1080p capable cards, the GTX 960 was up next, and in 1080p in low settings, the same settings I showed for that graph earlier, I got an average FPS of 57. Next up was the GTX 1050 Ti, and here in 1080p in medium settings I got an average FPS of 55, and as you can see by the minimum FPS this was definitely super smooth and the frame rate stayed very consistent. And for the last of the Nvidia cards, the GTX 1060 can definitely get you into the high settings with this Dell Optiplex if you want to, but I actually found just a couple too many stutters so I decided to keep it at 1080p in medium settings. With this I still got a very impressive average of 73. To kick off my sad supply of AMD cards at the moment, the R7 360 was up next. I also have a dedicated video on this one by the way, and with our normal graph settings at 1080p and low, I got a solid FPS average of 53. And finally, the last card on our list was the RX 460, and this is honestly probably the biggest surprise of the day. In 1080p and medium settings, just like our 1050 Ti mind you, I got an average FPS of right on the money at 60. This is the first time that I think I've personally seen the RX 460 straight out beat the 1050 Ti, which just goes to show how well these AMD cards can perform if they're properly optimized. Well, there you have it. That wraps up my benchmarking video for Forza Horizon 4 with some budget graphics cards. Now, feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet, and definitely hit that subscribe button because next week we have even more games to benchmark and hopefully my voice comes back. You don't want to miss those videos.